what is happening in the country, fuel prices going to as high as 12,000 uh, shillings. And it's ironic oh, that the 12,000 is in Hoima, the city that is... The oil <laughs> city. The oil city in our particular country. Mr. Karamangi, how do we approach this? There's something you alluded to mm. in, as you were posing the question to Michael. Yes, sir. And it was about people who go to bars or restaurants mm. and the amount of money they're paying for mm. one meal yes. is equivalent to the salary of that's waitress. The waitress that or waiter. Actually, they manage. For just one lunch. Yes. That figure, while correct, that is not even a 10% or even 5% of the economy that we have. Later on in the show, I'll share figures from a Bank of Uganda study yes. about how many Ugandans earn. Um, under 5 million shillings and how many earn monthly 1.5 million shillings. The figures are so dismal mm. that we are speaking to ourselves in this studio. Mm. Many people might not relate to the possibility that you can spend 150,000 or even 50,000 on a meal. Yeah. It, it does not compute to the bulk of Ugandans. I'm talking about anywhere above 90% of Ugandans. Yes. The math wouldn't math. Y yes. So some of the things we're talking about here mm. are from a position of privilege, mm. at least from a Ugandan perspective. Mm. Because globally, $50 is what? $15, $20, under $20. Mm. That should be a, for a country as wealthy as we are, resource wealthy as we are, that shouldn't be a problem. But here we are. If the fuel shortages had a direct impact, say, on national security, and national security, I mean regime survival, maybe we would see something in this regard, which is why you hear budget requests about renewing the motorcade yeah. mm. of State House and, even, uh, and refurbishing State House itself. Mm. Even the security. Yes, mm. and requests that have nothing to do with the people we see every day walking on the road to and fro, several kilometers from home to work. Who, oh, by the way, the voters who renewed the contract of these guys. Yes. Mm. As long as we have regime survival as the core policy, as the, as, the, as the core interest, we might as well forget about anything that represents the interests of Ugandans. What, what are you doing as a public official, as a public servant or civil servant, if fuel is none of your business. Mm. How can we have government officials whose work it is to come and tell us what the problem is or to complain? The prime minister, mm. as, the, as the word prime suggests, is the leader of government business. In many ways, is the head of government. Mm. Forget about the president. You cannot come to us and tell us that there's no fuel because... Fuel trucks are stuck at the border, and we are sorting that out. So what am I supposed to do? Is that my job? As a taxpayer. That we, we are warning motorists who are using the northern bypass that mm. there are people using pavers and throwing them at people. Mm -hmm. Would that be the same reaction if this threat was on any of mm -hmm. the leaders of the ruling junta? Or if it was Chagulani who was uh, having a challenge yes. with the security? So in addition to regime survival... Yes. I want to sh share on a notion that I have coined over time, and it is about a regime that is present when you least need it, and a regime that is completely absent when you most need it. Young people celebrating the passing, the, the drive-by of Chagulani Sentamu or Besije or Arias Lokwago are not at any point asking for government to come in. But this is when we see the full force of the coercive machinery of the regime. Mm. Juxtapose that with a young lady. We lose 21 of them every day. By sunset today, 21 will be dead. And those are the ones we know, giving birth. Yeah. On the news yesterday, a lady died because of protracted labor. Yeah, in Luero. Yes, in Luero. In Luero, yeah. yes. This lady needed a government to be present, but it wasn't. So you have a, a government that is absent mm. when you 
most need it okay. and present when you least need it. Mr. Karamagi, uh, then that brings me to us as a citizen. We are, we are blaming the government for everything, but it feels like we have become so patient that, that we are the most patient people in the world. We are not doing anything about these things. Even the fuel crisis will go. Like everything has come and go. Like how Karamagi has spoken and he has, uh, you know, is, what, you know, maybe kept quiet. Like how Lukwago has fought. And we have always been the same citizenry, the same people, uh, enjoying just there. We're just there. We must impress it upon citizens, as we mm. continuously do with Michael and others, mm. that the limits of the oppressor are determined by the oppressed. Mm. Should I say it again? Mm. The limits of the oppressor mm. are determined by the oppressed. How far the person oppressing you mm. will oppress you is determined by you who is being oppressed. Okay. Because we had a similar situation years ago in Kenya. Mm. I, was, I was there. Yes. Fuel rose by 50 shillings. Mm. 50 Kenya shillings. That translates into about... 1,500 shillings. Mm. Here we have a, a spike of more than... More than half. Yes, more than half, yes. Just 100% yeah. increment. That evening, people in their WhatsApp groups across Nairobi mm. texted and said, we are not driving tomorrow morning. No one is driving their car. We don't care what you do. Whether you, and then let us find you on the road. You will see what will happen to you. Indeed, the next morning, there were no cars. Everybody had parked. Yes. And by noon, the price had been revised downward. No. The, Ke started with them. the Kenyans have demonstrated it. The Bukinabe of Burkina Faso have demonstrated this. The South Africans have demonstrated it. So the Sudanese, as we speak, have demonstrated the same courage. Mm. The, the people of Mali, Algeria. as we speak, Algeria. Mm. We're talking about things that are happening in the now. Mm. And so Ugandans can do it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be NRM, FTC, NUP, DP. These are things that should be bare minimums, below which we have no... We, we, we have a cut-off points. And we say, mm. this issue unites all of us. I don't care what And continue. I think um, Rita, who says, in Uganda, the Rakitura dynasty came to destroy, that, uh, to destroy the unrestore and devolve. Analyze how Karamoja was left after Kataha exit and how the same person is mismanaging the education sector. Then uh, Rita continues to say, Council Awoneka raises pertinent issues on the Ministry of Education and Sports. But how can a toothless prime minister summon a powerful minister of education and health who are the appointed Then she should also resign. Mm. Yeah, what, we, what we need to create is that offices should work. Mm. I was in university. I was the chairperson of the Guild Tribunal. Mm. My friends were appearing before me as the AG. But mm. there was no nonsense. There's no friendship. You get what I mean? Yes. So everyone should do work bestowed upon them. Okay? If mm. the Prime Minister can't summon her minister, Katavite, she can't be leader of government. Alekera Otulimba. Alekera First Lady, Ajako. No, 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 no. no. See, there is nothing in the constitution called the First Lady. <laughs> It is cabinet ministers. And the head of the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Education and Sports is Honarevo uh, Janet Kataham Seven. Mm. Who is the I same am, person? And I am talking, that one I don't care. Mm. I'm talking about for me um Lama Gwanga Guri about Minister of Education. Mm. We are gonna, we are because to tomorrow mm. I will be appointed. Okay. The president can decide that okay, Michael, you're getting your, your, your education. Jango kolo wa minister. Njagala. Prime minister and someone inge. That's what we want to create. That offices should be left to work as offices regardless who is in them. Yeah, that is too late for that it's, particular thing. I don't know. It's not too late, but it feels like. No, it's we too have late. asked the president. Like, he should fire. Because the, we have. Uh, let, me, let me say it. Yeah. I think the president, mm. you should fire the minister of education and the minister of health. Please, for non performance. President. Okay. You should fire the Minister of Health and the Minister of Education for non performance, unless they make a case. Okay. Yeah.